All right. So we're back again for our next installment of spiritual training regiments. Um, it's been pretty neat to see over the last couple of weeks, and God has kind of helped us to build this and put things together. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we started this, we just kind of laid a foundation about how important it is to have a daily spiritual regiment in our lives, uh, how we need spiritual exercise so that we don't become spiritual couch potatoes. Uh, and then the second week, we looked at kind of the basics, our spiritual training uh, in general, what, what those things look like, and we kind of took a broad look at that. Today, we're going to dive into exercise number three, which I think is going to take us a little bit deeper uh, than we have been yet. Uh, so hold on to your hats, and let's go ahead and just dive in. I want to start with a passage of scripture today. It's Psalm 119, verse 11, and it reads like this. It says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I think that maybe you're getting the picture already, but the spiritual exercise number three that we need to adopt into our everyday lives is really biblical training, biblical training. I, I want you to know that if we repeatedly dive into God's word from cover to cover, now we can't leave things out and we can't pick and choose the pieces that we're going to be a part of or, or that we're going to read or that we're going to adhere to and, and then cut out the other things that maybe we don't like, we can't do that. But, but if we repeatedly dive into God's Word from cover to cover, what you're going to find is that it's going to bring to you a, a different place in your life than where you've ever been before. It's going to help to increase your biblical knowledge. It's going to help your biblical understanding. And, and you're going to grow as a Christian. I want you to know that it will provide opportunities for you to worship because what you'll find through reading God's Word and spending time in what He has to say it's going to help you to realize the things that you have been blessed with in your life. I want you to know that it's going to help you to, to not only grow in your place of worship, but it's going to bring you to a new level in your walk with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I want you to know that ultimately what it's going to do is help you to use God's wisdom in your everyday life. And I can't think of anything better. Can, can you think of another person that you'd want to ask? To be a part, not, not just a part of your life, but to lead or to guide or to direct your life? I certainly can't. I, I mean, there's, there's people in my life that I'd go to to ask questions to, that, that I want their advice or I want their input, but ultimately I can't think of a better one than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, what I want you to understand is that the Bible is an absolute necessity for your Christian walk in life. And that's the truth. And I know that maybe some of you are thinking, well, Pastor Jason, you just hit it on the head, right? You just came in and you told us that our number three spiritual training guide is to read the Bible. And I know that that seems simplistic, or maybe it seems like, you know, we're just going back to the basics again. But the truth is that there are too many people today, uh, in fact, vast quantities of people that, that claim the name of Jesus Christ, but for some reason can't find the time to, to be in God's Word. I want to actually read this to you just a little bit. I was going through a Barna study that was done uh, just recently. And at first it was really encouraging to me. And then as I started to read through it, what I found is the truth. <laughs> and the truth was maybe a little bit disheartening today. Here's, here's what the research says. Over half of Americans today read the Bible. And I thought, man, that's pretty decent, you know? We got 51% or 50% of our population that, that uh, can't seem to stay married and, and end up in divorce. And, and so to think that 50% of our, our American population is reading the Bible was good. But as you continue to read through the study, what you find out is that it, it actually is 48% of Americans today say that they read the Bible at least two to three times a year. <laughs> and as you started to work down the percentages, and in fact, here's what it worked down to, and just plain Jane and simple today, about 14% of American adults will read the Bible daily. 14%. Now, I want you to understand that. that that's, that's disheartening. Because there is so much in God's Word that we need to have and needs to be a part of our lives. Here's my agenda today. It isn't to shame you into reading God's Word at all. But it is to let you know that you're missing out on a tremendous blessing for your life. Something that is absolutely necessary for you to live and grow as a Christian. 
Uh, in fact, today, uh, my spiritual exercise uh, in reading the Bible, it, biblical training today, is really just to let you know how important it truly is. In fact, I'm just going to give you five. I think I probably could have given you at least ten, uh, but I'm going to give you five today. Five reasons that you, you simply need to be in God's Word. Five things that it does for us as Christians today. Here's number one. Number one, it helps us to know God. It helps us to know God, um, but in addition to that, it helps us to know His will. So I'm going to put these two together, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of give you these two things. And, and I want you to know this, that when we start to dive into God's Word, what we start to unpack, what we start to uncover, is who God really is, what He's about, what His heart is. And those things help us to draw closer to Him. In fact, Jesus Christ, when He was here on the earth, He says, you want to know my Father? You, you want to know what He is like? You want to see Him? Then look at me. And Jesus Christ becomes that picture of who God is and what he's about and what his heart is about. And as we start to uncover God's word, as we start to crack that word open and we start to read it, what we get is a visible picture of who God is. But in addition to that, it isn't just this far off distance thing where we get to know who God is, but it's about us in our everyday lives. It's, it's about what we're doing right here and right now in this lifetime, uh, what you're going through, what you're encountering. You see, when we start to get to know God's Word, what we find is that God's intention and His purpose is to get to know you personally, intimately. He wants to be a part of your life. In fact, He, he loves you so much and He cares for you so much that He wants to be able to call the shots in your life so that you don't have to go through some of the things that you would without Him. He, he wants to be able to pour in blessings. And in doing so, what you find is that, that in knowing God, he loves you and He cares about you and He wants to direct your life. So as He gives these things, what you start to see is a picture of God and what He wants for you and for your life. I'm going to read to you a couple of scriptures today too in that. I want to read to you Luke chapter 24 verse 27. And here's what it says. And, the, and beginning with Moses, all of the prophets, He interpreted to them in all of the scriptures the things concerning Himself. And it just simply means this, that when we dive into God's Word, He reveals Himself to us. We get to see a picture of who He is. He speaks directly to who we are. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says this, All Scripture is breathed out of the mouth of God, and it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. And, and there, it's the second piece of that. He says, listen, not only are, is God going to reveal himself to you as a result of being in God's word, but he's also going to, to teach you and to train you and to give you the things that you need to know to live your life on an everyday basis. Uh, number two today, uh, I want you to know that reading the Bible helps us to know the difference between right and wrong. Listen to this passage of scripture in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 reads like this. Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all of his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do other scriptures. And here's what he's saying in this. He's saying, listen, if we don't spend time in God's Word, if we don't get to a place where we start to understand it, if we're not in it uh, consistently, repeatedly, and taking the time to understand what it is that we're reading, then it's easy for us to twist God's Word and to make it mean something that it doesn't really mean. So uh, I think very simply what he's saying is that we're not really good judges of what is right and what is wrong. We have an inherent heart within ourselves to be in this position where we want to justify the things that we're doing, even if we know that we're wrong. So uh, what we find is that when we dive into God's Word, He helps to really clarify and bring us to this place where we can know the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Number three today, I want you to know that it helps us by giving us supernatural power. In fact, if you were here a couple of weeks ago uh, when I was preaching, you, uh, you learned that you had uh, supernatural power. In fact, you're a superhero, right? That's what we were kind of talking about. Uh, but very simply, when we get into God's Word, when we get closer to Him, when we start to listen to Him for guidance, for direction, and we start to look for Him for all of the things in our lives, He starts to impour and input in us things that we would never have uh, uh, of our own accord. You know, when you became a Christian, did it stop temptation? 
I, I mean, did you stop being tempted? Uh, was there the voice that was inside that just went away and you never even had a bad thought or you never were leaning towards doing something that you shouldn't? Uh, of course not. Uh, in fact, uh, when you read uh, in James chapter 1, verse 14, he says, But each one of us is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires, when he is enticed. And the truth is this, is that when we come into this Christian walk and Christian life, uh, the battles don't end. The devil doesn't just give up on us and, he, and just leave us alone and say, well, now they're safe. Uh, in fact, I think that he works harder sometimes to try and get us off track and to move us away. And what God does through reading his word and giving us that place of understanding is, is pour into us his power and his ability to overcome those things that might entice us, those things that might tempt us to step out of the way of what God wanted us to do. What you find in that is that there's conviction at times. And that moves us in the right places. And what, it, what else does it do? It gives us this place where we can stand firm upon what God has given to us. In Ephesians chapter 6, uh, I know that most of you guys might know that today, but it tells us that it, within God's word and within the things that he gives us is a full body of armor, a place to protect us from those things that we can't see, that supernatural world that's out there. And it doesn't just stop with being protected, being able to just take a, a blow, but he gives us what he calls the sword, right? He gives us a, a, a way to attack back. And that is what? It's simply God's word. God's word is what we have in our arsenal to, to defend ourselves against the attacks of the devil. I want you to know that it gives us supernatural ability to overcome the things that others can't simply because God is on our side and we know the right way to uh, deal with those situations as they come. And the last one today, I want to tell you this, is that it gives us hope. It gives us hope. When you read God's Word, what you find from beginning to end is this really incredible story uh, of how uh, God's creation, whom He loved and He cared about, was lost and broken and, and was distanced from Him. And how God goes through these extreme measures of giving His Son to die on a cross for the sins of his creation so that they might have a right relationship with him again. But it doesn't end there. You see, as you start to read all the way to the back of the book, what you find is that this ongoing battle between the devil and God himself and, and over us, right, is finally put to an end. In fact, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7 says this, He who has an ear, let him hear. Listen to this is what he's saying. The Spirit of God says this to the churches. To him who overcomes, right, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise. What he's saying is that when all of this is over, we get to have eternal life. Those who have overcome, those who have made it through. And what you find in God's word is this simple truth. That if we follow through to the end, if we spend our time in God's word, we get to know him, we get to understand the difference between right and wrong, we start to understand his will and we listen and we obey and we follow through, we defend ourselves as we need to, that we're going to make it. I've heard the old adage put this way, I've read the back of the book and we win. We know how the end is going to end, right? We know what happens when we cross the finish line. And although life is never guaranteed to any one of us, what we can have guaranteed is a life eternal. Heaven with our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that we make it there is by spending time in His Word. Guys, this is our challenge for this week, to be in God's Word every single day. And what I am going to guarantee you is that you will see a difference in your life, in your spiritual walk, if you do so. I love you guys. I'm praying for you, and I hope to see you soon.